I am Manfred and I make handcraft goat cheese. We are in the district of Laria. It's called uh, Peira Litoral. It's in the center of Portugal. I moved over 30 years from Germany to Portugal now. We make organic uh, self-sufficient farming. We have corn, we have all vegetables, we have potatoes, we have beans, we have olive oil. That's the principal things we have. In the background you hear the pigs. No, the, the cat is not looking after the pigs. She is like a pig. She lives in the stable of the pigs. And the night she is laying on the pigs. She is not looking for after the pigs. It's comfortable, warm. We have also chickens. Chickens for uh, eggs and chickens for breeding. We have something um, around more than 100 goats. On, on our farm, the most things have a circle. For example, the animals lead, eat from the land and they give on us menu. The chickens, they keep the insects away from the stable. They give us meat. It, it goes all together. Cheese making is one of the simplest way to uh, conserve milk. You have seasons where you have a lot of milk and you produce cheese for store it to a time where you have no milk. That's the principal reason for making cheese. I love cheese too. <laughs> I get to enjoy the crack of dawn every morning. Then in my own time I go to milk my goats. As a sweet delight I lay carob in the feeder to dump them into the milking room. Milking is very easy. You close with your first finger and with the thumb the oida on the top and then you go with the other finger slowly down. In the spring or in the early summer the goats produce the most milk. In the moment we have maybe 10 liter on a day, but in the season we have till 80 liter on a day. Every afternoon I go goat herding for about 4 to 6 hours. In this time the goats get more or less 60 to 80 percent of the food what they daily need. The goat is able to eat a lot of different stuff. For example, the goat can eat things what we not can use for our uh, food. They can eat brambles, they can use uh, olive branches that, that we cut down and they are not in concurrence to our food production. So they ate maybe 80% of the food of the goats are, is what the human not can use. In this case they are eating a lot of brambles in the forest. It, it's a little protection against the fire, the forest fire. With the goats, it's like with us. If it's really cold, they like to eat more brush. Like we, we, we like to eat more sugar or fat. If the goats eat quite uh, long and, and very concentrated in, in the night, the next day will be have bad weather, mostly. Sometimes, <laughs> it's not, no weather report is 100%. <laughs> We call some clouds uh, th this ones. Th they look like sheep. Then you can be sure that in the next 24 hours the weather is raining. That's what I read. <laughs> in, in the last 10 years, maybe we stay at home with the goats three times. That was really, really bad weather. The storm and really strong water watering and it was impossible to go out. Yeah. And cheese making, it's depending on how much milk we have. 
when we have amount from around 100 liter, we make cheese. So it can be every five days or every day. The milk comes out of the cooler at five degrees. I put it in the tank to heat it up to 32 degrees, sometimes steering. I then measure the correct amount of rennet which I add to the warm milk. Then I leave it and wait for the magic to happen. One hour later, the milk is coagulated, so I cut it into cubes in order to separate the whey from the cheese. The separating needs more or less a half hour. The whey. We have to make sure that we don't put it in the nature. So the pigs are growing very well on whey, and so we feed the pigs with the whey. Next, I press a solid mass into the molds and make sure that the most of the whey goes away. We use three different sizes of molds. One day later, I take them out of the molds and cover them with salt. This seals the cheese and makes it salty. I put the cheese into storage, turning them every day. After six weeks the cheese is edible, but with ripening of age it brings more flavor. Before being sold the cheese is washed more than ten times to remove the mold. I finally place my label on the cheese as it leaves the dairy. I sell my cheese on the local market in Petroku. At first we make it only for self-sufficient. But neighbors came and they like this cheese and so it, it starts running. In the market it's maybe something around 80% commercial. Depending from the season of the year till 20% uh, small farmers, they produce a little more than they need. And so this little more they sell on the market. It should be normal that uh, on a farm everything has a reason. You cannot say how often it's when it's necessary. We have to kill. If a pig, it's, uh, for example, this three, uh, four pigs are two too much. We have to slaughter another one. But it was necessary. We slaughter them because they need space. And mostly, our uh, animal is too old. Then it's necessary to slaughter it. But uh, so that's the main reason. Uh, chickens on the barn, they are too much, then we have to sort of some. It's control. <laughs> it's not why we are running behind the meat, but it's only to control the size of the pigs or the, the chickens or the goats. That's the main reason for slaughtering. And of course the meat is useful for our cooking. I think technology should be useful for, for your daily work and not the technology take your life. For us, we use a motor cultivator, a brush cutter, a motor saw and a cooler for the milk. Milking machine, that's more or less all what we are using on a water pump. Of course, telephone, mobile phone, the things we use also, but uh, it's not a part of our life. We can live without the things too. In our case, it's it's a very small holding, and so you have to do a lot more by hand. And it's more ecological. If you think about the big tractors, they use a lot of gas and, and, and stuff, only for load a little bit hay and as a place. It makes no sense. I don't want to be dependent from electricity or from gas or from things what we not have here. We have a lot of firewood here around. So it would be stupid, don't use the things. It's also more ecological to use the things what's around you. That's why I cook on open fire. We make maybe woofing since 1995, something around this. And my main interest for this is 
uh, to get in contact with other people. And on one side, uh, it's a little bit help, but we give also a little bit time from us to them, so they can learn and uh, to be in contact, each learn from the other. In this little infinite picture of space, once the potatoes are planted, the new leaf turns. Life in this farm is an elementary story, inspired by the logic of nature and by the intuition deriving from the daily fatigue of surviving. There is no complexity of questions or doubts about origin. There is real observation of facts. Every consideration on Earth is made on a base of empirical knowledge, in a solution of awareness for which the farmer knows, and life is a hard but simple thing. <laughs>